We've covered the Cartesian coordinate system, so now we're going to jump in and discuss the normal and tangential system. Let's imagine that we have a particle that's moving along a path, as you can see here, and we're going to start by looking at the axes. So with this system, our normal and tangential axes are going to be on the particle wherever it is. So here you can see we have our red UN and our red UT. And UN and UT, being that they follow the particle, are going to be functions of time. So let's start by writing that over here with our definitions. So they're always going to be changing. So now we can say that UM is always going to be pointed towards the concave side of the curve. And our UT is always going to be tangent to the path of motion. And it'll also always be 90 degrees from UN. So now you can see in our drawing, we have a point O. That's our instantaneous center of rotation. So our UN axis is always going to be pointed towards our point O. And our variable rho, this is going to be the distance from our particle to point O. So in the normal and tangential system, our position can be defined by this S of T. So Our position can be described by S of T, or if you knew the equation of this line, you could use that as well. Velocity, which is always tangent to the path, must be the tangent direction UT and velocity will have no component in the n direction just by definition. So we can say velocity equals ds dt times u of t, or we can simplify that by writing the magnitude of the velocity times ut equals our velocity v. So for acceleration, we know acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to t. So we can write that. And we can use the expression above to plug in for v to say And we can continue to break this out because we're going to have here a derivative of a product, this v times u of t. So let's continue breaking this expression down. And we're going to get this v dot u t. So v times u of t, taking the derivative of that product, that's not going to be a constant. So we're going to show this v dot as just kind of an aside. This is going to be the derivative of the speed with respect to time. That's all this stands for. And speed, we know, is the magnitude of the velocity. So 
just write that out as well. So this is going to give us what's called the rate of change of speed. So it's important to note here as well, this looks somewhat similar to our equation that we have for acceleration, dv dt. But you can see here this is not the same because v dot is going to be the derivative of speed with respect to time and acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So these are not the same even though they look the same. Okay, so back to acceleration. So this was the expression we got for A, but really we want a form for A that looks more like some component times un plus some component times ut. So we're going to write ut is going to be equal to the magnitude of velocity over rho times u of n. And that will allow us to put this into our expression. And we're going to write a equals Here's our v dot again times ut. So here we have our equation for acceleration that has a normal and tangential component. Giving us a little more room, let's look again at our particle traveling along a path. We're going to write our normal acceleration. We can show that as this line and we're going to say this is again pointing concave and so am and that's going to equal v squared over rho so the magnitude of the velocity squared divided by our instantaneous center of rotation distance to the particle and our tangential acceleration at from here we're going to get our total acceleration a as these just form a vector triangle and that will give us our total acceleration and one more thing to note so if we look at our bottom left we can see that we have on XY system, we have our particle moving along a curve again. And let's say we know that this line is equal to Y equals F of X. We can use this equation for rho to solve whenever we know the equation of the line. And this is going to be the absolute value. And there we go. So we can solve for rho using this equation whenever we know the equation of the line. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.